The Sports Scouting Report with Lee Brickeen. Brought to you by Medines Collision Center in Baton Rouge. Take control, choose Medines. Gross Savant Lodge, south of Lake Charles, the true sportsman's paradise. Treads and Care Company in Central, the tires you need, the service you want. Harvey Auto in Shreveport, Bossier City, the name you have trusted for years. And Gage in Baton Rouge, get better connected with Gage. Here's your host, Lieber King. Hi everyone, I'm Lee Burkeen with the Sports Scouting Report podcast. Uh, we're filming today from DiGiulio Brothers Italian Restaurant on Perkins Road. And if you've never been to DiGiulio's, please give it a try. It's incredible food. I've been coming here since 1992. Long time. Mike Johnson's the owner. You can see the menu behind us. Uh, it's great to have you know a local restaurant support what we do. Uh, today's show, we got great guests. We got Larry Dotrieve, Hall of Fame coach. Uh, his, his career spans many, many years. And uh, we're going to talk to Larry first. And we got Ryan Paraloo also on our show. His former quarterback from East St. John High School in Reserve, Louisiana, Laplace area there. We're going to talk about Ryan's career. And Ryan's doing really good now training quarterbacks and lives in Baton Rouge. We'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. What does that bug man do? Not only do we do pest control, we do odor control, bat removal, moisture control, rodents, and of course, bed bug control. Give the bug man a call. We get them before they get you. Welcome back. Lee Burkeen, your host of the Sports Scouting Report podcast. And look, I want to mention to all the fans, to our show, if you love Louisiana Football Magazine and you love what we do over the years since 1997, uh, our YouTube page, we started this year because I'm late to the, the circus and the show, as they say. Um, just learn what YouTube's about, Coach. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> Coach Larry Dotree. Good. Thanks for joining me, man. Thank you for having me. Uh, I want to talk to you, and it goes back, way back, um, and I've got some notes here, but 37 years as a high school coach, 20 as a head coach, um, it spans, I mean, we're going to try and get all this in today, but your Opelousas days, 91 to 96, Opelousas Catholic, 97 to 2000, your East St. John days, but I want to go all the way back to the beginning, though, 1965 where you were a student teacher, as they say in the area, Nish, New Iberia High School, and your mentor was Faze Mafus, Mafus. The greatest guy that ever blew a whistle. Uh, phenomenal uh, man, organized, just uh, it gave me my start. He put me in the junior high where I had to coach every position, and he told me, if you want to be a good head coach, you got to know all 22 spots. Old school. And that started me, that's right. And uh, he was a wing tee guy, and uh, uh, I kind of got itchy and saying, you know, I like to, I'd like to throw the ball. So I went over to Fatima High School in 1967 under mm -hmm. Phil Stoma, and uh, was with him one year as an assistant. And in January of '68, I was 25 years old. Wow. He, he moved up to the uh, State Department, and Monsignor Orlanti, uh, Coach Mafus, he was very influential in getting me that job. And uh, that's how my career started in 1968 as a head coach. And I remember you were quoted by, uh, I don't know if it was a Lafayette advertiser who it was, it might have been the newspaper in New Iberia, but you said Phil Stoma was the one that brought you the, the passing game and that he was ahead of his time well, back he, in 67. He yes, he was the only one. He and A.L. Williams up in uh, Woodlawn were the only ones throwing the ball. Yeah. And uh, so I got enamored with that, and uh, the rest is history. I always had a, an all-state quarterback. And I'm trying to throw some goodies out there for people that know who you are, but they don't know all these little things I about you. you. But I remember your Canadian days before you were offense coordinator for the British Columbia Lions. Right. Uh, you were quoted in the past for saying that when you had spare time and you'd see an NFL game, a college game, you'd watch a little Canadian football I, league. I watched that before the NFL because it was – you're playing on a longer field, you're playing with one less down, and you almost have to throw it every down. What was that like for you living in Canada? Um, Vancouver has probably got to be the most beautiful city in North America. So we weren't stuck in the, the frozen tundras. 
we played on an indoor stadium, but uh, just uh, it was to coach a guy like Doug Flutie it was amazing. He was a just a magic in a bottle, and that was a great uh, experience for me. But uh, it's uh, you know you at the mercy of the the next regime, and I lost my head coach. Uh, he got fired at mid mid season, mm. and they brought a guy in from Toronto who told us that this is a business. Um, when the season's over, we're gonna part ways with everybody. There's only a five man staff up there. There's a head coach and mm. five assistants to keep you playing with 36 people. That's all you got it's on. It's still team. a business, huh? Still a business. So I was fortunate to land in Opelousas and uh, went from there. And then you, your last coaching job, you, uh, I mean, you were at East St. John as a head coach 2002 right. to 2010. Correct. But you went back as offensive coordinator I in went 19. Back, yes, I went back to help uh, Brandon Brown and uh, when Brandon was coaching at St. Helena, he uh, he lived in Laplace, and we okay. would meet, you know, at different times at the library and talk ball. And um, his second year there, I went and uh, helped him. We went nine and two, and uh, he uh, he he's the right man for that job. He, he's a perfect guy. He graduated from uh, from there, and he uh, he's done a great job. They they went to the quarterfinal this year, so. Uh, but I went back and, uh, but once you're a head coach, it's hard to become an assistant again. So, uh, yeah, 40, I made the right decision. <laughs> Ryan's going to come on later in the show. We're filming right now, but Ryan just walked in. Your former right. quarterback from East St. John. We're going to talk to the him. Best that ever played. And, and speaking of that, yeah. you've coached a lot of great players. You know, started at Fatima 45 years ago. Yeah. Ryan was the, the no, best. Hands down. He, uh, you could never call a bad play with him. He got me out of a many, many a tight spot, and uh, the true dual threat. Uh, uh, well, yeah, he did it all. Did it I mean, all. He was a phenomenal uh, football player, basketball player, and baseball player. Um, any recruiting stories? I know we talked about Mac Brown and, and obviously LSU, but you you mentioned to me that there was a there was a, uh, a day where Mac Brown uh, talked to you a few times about. Obviously, a lot of coaches did, but yeah. about Parallel. He was committed to Texas for a yeah. long time. He, he, he told me, he said, we, we're going to have a hard time if he backs out on us. Because once we he committed in June or July, he said, we won't, won't nobody else try to come come play behind him. And, uh, you know, he made a decision to go to LSU. And he told me, he said, there's uh, only one guy that will come here regardless. He's from a double-A high school, Jim Ned High School, where his dad's the coach. His name is Colt McCoy. I didn't know who Colt McCoy was. Still in the NFL. So right? he's still there, yeah. You were an assistant coach at Louisiana Tech for six years. Correct. Um, went into banking for three years. You were yeah. lost, huh? Well, I was lost. <laughs> I'm just I, I, had, I had a friend of mine who I had recruited, his son from Jesuit. And he told me, once you uh, get tired of this coaching, I want you to come to work for me. I said, I don't know anything about banking. He said, well, you know about people. Right. And, uh, Every, we're mark, we're going to make have a marketing department and bring you in as a vice president. And anyway, I made my wife a promise when we left Tech. When I moved my youngest daughter, she was in the ninth grade. She said, "If we make a move, we you have to stay there until she graduates," which is yeah. what I did. So, uh, but uh, I was when I see people playing football in the street, I'd pull over and watch them. <laughs> so I never lost that urge. <laughs> you weren't looking at loans. You're like, I need to get back to football. Right. You were head coach at Riverside to high school, East Ascension. One year. One year. Um, and I want to mention some of your friends in coaching. Uh, Louis Cook's still going strong. Almost 400 wins at Notre Dame. Yep. Uh, Kirk Crochet, been retired. He had 201 wins at Lauraville. Right. Um, and then Donnie Perron, who coached a long time at Port Barry. One of uh, the best. 257 wins. One of the best. Carol De La Husse, uh St. Martinville, 246 wins. Yep. Who's still involved, yep. even though he's not a coach we, right we, now. We've had some battles with those guys. Uh, Donnie put a couple of whippings on me when I was a, was a, <laughs> right. a lot of people. Right. <laughs> and uh, But Louis Cook did a student teaching under us at Lafayette High in 1974. And uh, we became fast friends. And he was a just a quick study. Uh, he and Kirk Crochet and Carol were all in that same class. Yeah. That's great. Three great Hall of Famers, and uh, I was fortunate to rub elbows with those guys. And, and uh, Louis was just uh, he was so much uh, ahead of the game, where he would he was so inquisitive. You know, he was like yeah. a sponge. But uh, he, he's he's the best and still going at 50 years. I know all those coaches who uh, spoke highly of you to, when you went into the Hall of Fame. I know they were all quoted over that whole year about when you went in. Yeah, well, it was um, it's, it's a blessing. Uh, Kirk Crochet was the one that nominated me, an ex-Loreville Tiger. And uh, 
I'm, I'm glad to be in that number. You know, just, uh, uh, I, it's hard to validate yourself, yeah. but when you're in that number, you know, yeah. you're one of the few. I want to mention this. Here's some of the coaches that learned under uh, Coach Dotrieve, uh Phil Banco, Robert Valdez, who's currently at Grambling, by the way, uh, Benny Gilbo, who played for East, uh, played for coach at Opelousas High School, Jeff Jordan, Dennis Lorio, who's got a state championship ring, uh, Tony Payne, did a good job, uh, Ben Powell, Ryan Serpis does a good job at Springfield. Right. And then Chris Stroud, right. uh, been around a lot of guys that learned under you. Um, and I got to mention a story, Coach, uh, before we go. Uh, would you like to share the Nick Saban story that everybody heard no, from you? No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm trying to be friends with Nick. <laughs> All right, we won't go there, but there was an interesting story when Nick was recruiting uh, Paralu uh, at East St. John. But any anything you want to talk about the game today, where we are with the game? Because I know that. A lot of the guys that, that grew up in the 70s, 80s, 50s, 60s, I, I'm an 80s guy. I don't like where college football is going with the portal. I, I I, think, I, I, we need something to happen. I think that better. in the NIL is just it's atrocious. I think that when you have a quarterback that's in the NIL that's making a million dollars a year and a lineman that's making $60,000 a year, they, they feel left out. and. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to block for that guy. It's just, it's created, yeah. it's a lot of inequities. I, I, I think I, it's bad. I want to ask you this from a coach's perspective, Coach Dotree. Let's, let's just pretend you're a college coach right now, like 2022, and your whole team's trying to transfer, and you're trying to sign players the same month, and you're trying to hire coaches. Can a coach handle all that now on their plate? I mean, it was hard enough before just to hire coaches and, and sign a class in December. Well, it's whoever has the most money is going to have the best. But and a bowl game. Yeah, and here's what's happened. The kids that are – there's going to be some high school kids that are good players are going to be left out this year because instead of recruiting a high school kid, they're going to go get a guy that's 21 that's got a graduate year that's already been in college for four years. Yeah. Like a Lindsey Scott, he's been playing like six or seven years, right? Yeah. So they needed a quarterback and then couldn't it work because that kid transferred and went and got him. Oregon's got a guy that's going to be on his ninth year next year. Well, that, that's not right. I don't know if students go for nine years. Yeah. Well, if they're dumb, they are. <laughs> <laughs> nine years. Can you imagine having a tight end nine years? Um, we just need it to change to where it's better because kids now, I've, I've, been, I've been talking to a lot of kids who are making money, and I'm okay with that. But you got to make appearances to get paid. And if you got five companies that you represent, how do you have 50 nights to go you it takes a, it takes away from what you're there you for. You can't be a kid anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's a trade out on on getting paid. Well, especially the, with the demographics of some of these kids that never had anything. Yeah. I mean, that kind of money is just. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. Uh, any final thoughts about high school championship games this past month? Oh, they were great. Uh, other than the, the 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 brother Martin and Curtis game, uh, those were some phenomenal games. They just come down to the end. Uh, the, the the St. Thomas Moore and uh, uh, Lafayette Christian. Holy cow, what a game. 100 points. Yeah. I mean, when you're down 10 points with two minutes left, you're supposed to lose, but they found a way to do it. Your you kind know? of game, though, and, Coach. Yeah. And, and St. Charles Catholic, uh, do, they uh, do undoubtedly the best job in the state. Two in a row. With, unbelievable. And he's going to win another baseball championship. Probably. Unbelievable. So I told him the other day, Wayne Stein, you don't have no way to go but down because right. you've got two state foot championship football your first two years. And have a chance to have two baseball championships. I spoke to their alumni group. They were one and three starting the year, and you thought the world stopped. Yeah, but what happened they came is back. when they got Audemars back, the quarterback, it made yeah. a whole difference. Yeah. But uh, there's, uh, it's great. I mean, the, the uh, I was always against the select, non-select, because I always thought that I don't think you find a true champion unless yeah. you play. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it is the way it is, and you have to coach you under those circumstances. Thank you, Coach. Always Appreciate you, man. Thank you. That was uh, Coach Larry Dotrieve. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. We're going to have the greatest player that he ever coached in his 45 years, Ryan Perilou, former LSU quarterback, will be joining us from East St. John High School. We'll be right back. Grosavon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Grosavon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Give them a call at 337 598 2357. That number to call again is 337 598 2357. 
and have the time of your life. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. Lee Brookeen, host of the Sports Scouting Report podcast. You just saw Coach Larry Dotrieve, uh, East St. John, Opelousas High School, New Iberia, British Lions, Canadian Football League. I mean, 45 years as a coach. And the greatest player that Coach ever coached, he coached some great ones. Robert Hammond was national player at Opelousas, Benny Gilbo. You know, later on at uh, Opelousas, I think a little bit, a little transover, you had Devery Henderson. There's a lot of great players. Uh, that came out, but he said that Ryan Paralu, who was the number one recruit in the country his senior year, now joins us. Ryan. How you doing? Thanks for joining us, man. Hey, thanks for having me. You were on the cover of our magazine going into your senior year, mm -hmm. and it's been so long ago, I think you even forgot that you were on the cover <laughs> of the magazine. But at East St. John, I remember as a fan, just as someone in the media, like, where's Ryan going to go? And then it was like Texas, and then no, he's not going to go to LSU. And here we are, National Signing Week, which this show is going to air the day of signing day, which is Wednesday. We're okay. taping it on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And all these young men are, you know, hoping to sign like you. Mm -hmm. What was that like, Ryan, that I remember you were committed to Texas for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then you decommitted to LSU right before signing day, not long before. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to one of your games, and I met your dad at the concession stand like week 10 at East St. John. Mm -hmm. Your dad had a Texas hat on and, and, a, and a Texas shirt. Mm -hmm. And I said, what do you think? He said, well, you know, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. And how did that work for you? You know, people that are watching now going back in a time capsule. Well, well, for me, that, that process was amazing, first and foremost. Um, but... For the kids that's coming up in this recruiting process, the thing they need to understand is, is that they need to stay close to their family. The decision is big. Now, Texas was somewhere I wanted to go, but LSU was somewhere I needed to be. Gotcha. And, and, and that's why I went to LSU. No place like home. There's no place like home. So you kids get caught up in the, you know, Austin and New York and South Beach, but you mm -hmm. caught up in it, but you're not thinking about the next five years. Exactly. Um, it's, it, you know how much better it is when you could just make a phone call and you, your family could be there in one second, whether they're making a phone yeah. call and guess what, it, it's, it's a day or two before they could get to you. Yeah. So my decision as a recruit, when I was coming out, first and foremost, you know, Coach Dotree, if he just got off, um, he played a, a major role in, in what, what I had to do um, along with my family and, and, and just to just to get a little deeper about the recruiting process, you know, the kids need to understand that it's very important to make the right decision right now. Yeah, that's it. And then you go to LSU. And like a lot of kids, I mean, you're 17, 18 years old. Mm -hmm. You're not 30. Right. And, and things happen, you know, you, you end up at Jacksonville State. You had a great career. I mean, you end up going to the Giants. Mm -hmm. You played a little Canadian league like. Coach Dotry coached over there. Okay, yes, sir. I even saw you played in France. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how you end up in France? Well, the, the, the thing about loving the game is it, it's different from playing the game and loving the game. See, all I ever did was love this game. I gave everything I had in my heart to this game. Yeah. Um, so it didn't even matter what I did or where I was playing yeah. as long as I was playing this game and loving the game. A lot of kids these days, you know, I don't know what they're doing it for. You know, you're doing it for money. You're like money ain't never really made me do yeah. to play the game. You love, you love. I just football. love playing football. I remember a game, Brian. It was your, I don't know if it was your senior or junior at Santa Mall. Maybe coach will tell me. Uh, it was a close game. Y'all lost that game, but I remember a drive that you looked like between Joe Montana and Michael Vick on the same series. Mm -hmm. You were trying to bring your team back. You were willing your team. And I remember you converted four fourth downs with your feet and your arm. Well, if we're going to talk about that, it wasn't Santa Mont. It, it was Hornville. That was um, another game. Yeah, that it was, was it was Hornville. Santa Mont. We um, actually dominated them the whole game. Um, but in, in that Hornville game, it was a game where we were up, and then we were down, and we had to make a couple four down conversions. Yeah. Um, 
Reggie Joseph and Deron Thomas. Um, they were critical in that game and the play calling. Um, and you, we end up getting into overtime. Uh, we end up still losing that game, but just the will to, to, to be up and down and continue to fight. Yeah. That's it. But you had a sense of pocket presence. Oh, you yeah, know, you got to be Guys willing. can be timed at four or five, and, but you weighed over 200 pounds, and you were a big guy, but you were hard to tackle. I mean, I, I watched you three times live. I watched your scrimmage at East, West St. John with Tyson Jackson. That was fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Tyson Jackson, if you don't know who he is, the LSU great DN, I think was 6'5", 280 at that time. Yeah, he, he was the only one, I think, that really could get to you a few times back in the day. So – so just to talk about Tyson Jackson and Quinn Johnson and Patrick uh, Jackson and those guys, um, this is when I really learned about what coaching is about. Um, Coach, that, that game, we lost that game. Um, uh, it was a jamboree. And um, I didn't want to take that bus home. I was so upset. And, and then that next day, Coach Dotri told me, you know what, Ryan, I'm done. And, and I went to church and I, and I said, Ma, that the coach that kicked me off the team. And and my mom and my brother was there and and I had reminders forever. Wow. Um and cause I was hurt, like, see the game is the only thing I ever loved. And when coach did that to me, that made me love it even more. Like cause he, cause he yeah, because he I almost got it took away from me. You have to grow up quick. Yes, like, oh my God, like I can't play football no more. Adversity. Exactly. So when, when, when that happened, it made me go harder and harder and harder. And coach, you know, I, I know coach was teaching me a lesson. Yeah. Uh, I know that now. Yeah. At that time, I thought I thought it was about to be over. With. Not everything is going to be success. You're going to fail. Exactly. You know, you're Sometimes. not always going to win in, in this life. That's why these guys in the portal. What do you think of that? Um, you have a bad year, they leave. I, mean, I don't believe in that. I don't. I believe in loyalty. Yeah. Um, you know, it was many times. You know, you can walk away from something. No, I, I w- just because it didn't go your way, you just yeah. walk away. Yeah. I would never. And, and y'all had some great teammates. Uh, Deron Thomas, uh, great running back. Vegas Franklin with the Miami. Kirsten Pittman with the LSU. Yes. Two great. Two of the best defensive ends to on a team. Play. Unbelievable. Y'all had some great players but I mean at the end of the day you were the number one recruit in the country Mm -hmm. um any Mac Brown stories Ron uh well I know they you remember that day when you had to call him and tell him you weren't going to Texas well actually I talked to coach Dotrieb about that um before I did it and uh, we talked to Mike Davis because that's the thing you're supposed to do yeah let somebody know what's going on and um I decided to go to LSU so I I talked to Mike Davis but the 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 fun story about uh Mac Brown is they they named their horse after me. Um, they named the horse Lulu. Come on. So I, I was excited about that. And I don't regret none of the decisions I've made in my yeah. life. Yeah. Um, LSU was the best decision. Uh, I was going to win a national championship regardless. Yeah. So I'm yeah. just thankful, truly thankful to my personal Lord and Savior. Um, because without him, that's you know, it wouldn't be nothing. And now you live in Baton Rouge. And I'm living bad. And you're now. training quarterbacks. And I'm training quarterbacks. So all the mamas watching and daddies. <laughs> you got a guy down. that's been through it. Mm-hmm. You know how to teach it because you could you could run and throw. Yes. You, well, you've been at the highest and the lowest. And now you're training these young men. Yes, I train these young men. I, I teach them. The things I teach them is not just playing the game, but I need you to feel it. Yeah. And also see what you're doing out there. Like, it's hard to play this game if you don't know what you're looking at. So I teach, I teach, I teach. It's, uh, the drills and the stuff I see on the internet and all these people out here that's pretending that they know the game, Yeah, I, I don't believe in none of that. Yeah, you played it. Yeah. Now, anything you take from Larry Dotry, your coach, with his passing brain and, 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 and knowledge? S- stick it. <laughs> <laughs> stick it. Let it go. Throw the ball. Release that rock. Don't hold on to it. No, you got to get that ball out your hand. Believe it. Trust it and let it go. Um, if you were playing today, Ryan, in an offense, what would be the ideal offense today? I mean, the spread wasn't really fully out there in college when you were playing. It was still kind of a power eye offense, but now everybody's spread. But do you like five wide if you were playing today? 
well, me personally, I believe in diversity. Um, I, I grew up in a spread offense, option, underneath the center, play action. I believe in let's let's play football. Yeah. Uh, would you would you learn about the pro leagues, the Giants, Arena League, France? Oh, meet a lot man. of people. Yeah, met a lot of people. Um, wow, that's that's the most important part about playing football. First and foremost, just to these kids knowing on the recruiting, education is key. How far could you throw a football? Well, when I was everybody wants to know that. Well, I are you. I, I could throw it about 85 standing up, but 60 on my knee. And On the run, you could throw it 60, huh? On the run, I could throw it pretty much the whole field if I was running with it. But um, it just, just the game is so special. Yeah. And I hope the kids that's listening know, hope, and I hope they know that it's a privilege to, to play. play this game. And, 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 and love the game, like you said, love it back. Tell everybody how they can get in touch with you if, if it's a potential young quarterback coming up. Well, a potential young quarterback that want to get in touch with me, they can contact me strictly through email. I'm um, rparalu at gmail.com. And that's everything for every handle, rparalu, for Facebook and Instagram. Say that one more time. Right? rparalu, Facebook and Instagram. Spell parallel for the people are from P E R R I L L O U X. Because it could be spelled differently depending on where you're at in Louisiana. And it could be said different. Yeah. Um, in America, it's a parallel. And when I'm in Europe, it's Perilou. No kidding. Mm -hmm. How long were you in France? I was in France eight months. Wow. Did you? How did you? How did you talk with them? I did just you, talked with them in French. You knew a little French? Just a little bit. A little bit enough. Just enough. I appreciate you coming on today, man. Mm -hmm. I know the coach is watching you right now, Coach Dotrieve. Oh. They're going to be able coach. to hang out a little bit once this is over. Man, Coach, uh, and, and just to tell you some stories about Coach, is this right here. I remember going to Ohio, me and Coach, and I see Coach pull up, and Coach got a, you know, a suitcase, the old school <laughs> ones. And I don't know what's in that suitcase. <laughs> and we get on that plane. And we going, and Coach Sharp looking good. Yeah. So when we get on that plane and we get to that hotel, you know what came out of that suitcase? Coach had a box fan. He had a what? A box fan. A box fan? <laughs> Coach can't sleep without his fan. Now, guess what I can't do? I can't sleep without my fan to this day. I'm 35 years old, and I still can't sleep without my fan. Ryan, where were you going, to Ohio State? We was going, we was receiving the Ohio Touchdown Club Award. Come on. Me wow. and Coach. Coach introduced me. Coach is the man. Coach, he gave me the best introduction ever. Um, and that box fan is something that I took away from that trip. Before we go, I know we're going <laughs> a little over, but before we go, what do you think of the current LSU coach, Kelly, and what they did this year at LSU? Uh, I'm not going to speak on it too hard, but Jaden Daniels is playing well. You like Jaden? Yes. He can run. Now, he hasn't hit his full. He have not peaked out yet. Yeah. I would love to work with him. Put that out there. I yeah. would love to work with Jaden. I would love to open up his mind and his game and let him start seeing it a little bit better. Because he's got the stuff. He got the juice. He can release, like you said, Man, not just hold. get that thing out. So think about it. You know, when, when, when that cup of two sitting out, and then now they just did that. All they did was this. So now we got one-on-one -on -one backside. Yeah. Just throw that go ball. And he can run better than anybody exactly. when he needs to. When he so needs if you to. know you can run already, why not? We're we, we supposed to be going deep, coach. Yeah. So that's all I just said right there. Jaden, you heard that, Jaden Daniels? Before you go on vacation deep. to California, where he's from? Yeah, we need to be going deep. Let's, don't let's go to California and train, train with Ron here. I'm right here. I'm right here. Right in Baton Rouge. You don't even have to leave. <laughs> Ryan, appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Ryan Perilou, number one recruit in the country when he came out of East St. John. Now he's training quarterbacks, and he's in BR now. Mm -hmm. If you need to get in touch with him, you can even call me, and I'll forward how to get in touch with Ron Paralu or email me at Lee Burkeen or the website LAFootballMagazine.com. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see everybody really soon. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Burkeen.